I'm Dori Chatel. I'm the executive director of MEI, a Medical Education Institute, and we are so glad to all be here together to share some information about Home Hemo, the nuts and bolts of how to stay home and why it's worth it. And our sponsor for tonight's webinar is Outset Medical, and that's where Keith is from, and he'll tell you more about what he does in a little bit. Um, Keith and I are going to be your co-anchors this evening, so we're going to kick the conversational ball back and forth. Jen Raver is uh, the newest addition to the MEI leadership team, and our special guests tonight are David Rush and Liz Henry, and so we will meet them both. So I'm going to call on folks to introduce Keith themselves, and then we'll, we'll do Keith last, and then he can kick us off. So I... Liz, you are first in my top row next to me here, so I will start with you. Tell us a little bit about you and how you came to be involved with home hemodialysis. Um, my name is Liz Henry, and I too have my coffee mug. It's good to be home. And <laughs> I gotta get mine. I gotta get mine. <laughs> my husband is a home hemo user, Tableau user, and I am his care partner. And we have been doing this for about two and a half years, this particular form of hemodialysis at home. And that is, that is why I am here and I'm happy to be here today. Okay. And just really quickly, um, your husband, Dick, was going to be here, but yes. he is, our, our, was not able to join us. Our patient hit, hit a little road bump. We were in Hawaii. A week ago, we came home a week ago, and uh, just something that can happen. And he picked up a staph infection, so he's spending uh, about ten days at Stanford Hospital working through this. But we, we, he is in our thoughts. Yeah, he's definitely in mine. <laughs> I know. So, oh, I know. We like that. The the home hemo, it could happen anywhere. It just anyway, it, yeah. it is what it is. So there but you go. Why? You traveled to Hawaii, so yeah, yeah, that part's it was pretty good. Quite a souvenir. Yeah, so. yeah, that's not the souvenir. You you really yeah. want to bring back a pineapple okay. or something next yeah. time, just you know, for the record. Okay. Um, David, you're next. Tell us about you and and what's your relationship to to home hemo. Uh, well, my name is David Rush. I am a platinum cell recording artist. Um, I've done in center. Home Hemo also was a transplant recipient in 2010, uh, lasted 2018. Um, I also am a motivational speaker and work with various companies doing consultant work for patient um, relations and also just happy to be here. I am a home hemodialysis user. Um, I've worked on both modalities uh, as far as all home, never peritoneal, but only home hemo. And I've uh, been doing dialysis since 2007 until 2010 when I got the transplant that lasted me about seven and a half, eight years and went back on dialysis in early 2018. And I've uh, been doing the Tableau um, home hemodialysis machine ever since October, 2021. So it'll be one year um, in about maybe eight or nine days. So- Congratulations. Um, it's been a good All right. Yes. And I also have my- uh, <clears throat> my outset okay oh, there you go oh, wow. product, product that's a pretty one, right? you like that one, right? so, yeah so and and you are and you are recording from your new home i am recording from my new home uh we recently my family and me moved into our new home in june of this year and um we are definitely happy to be here and just getting accustomed to everything new um but we're blessed to be here so yes excellent all right i'll go to jen I'm Jen. I am a, well, I was a home dialysis nurse for 10 years. I learned a whole bunch of different programs. And then I had the opportunity to come work at MEI as a project director. And I am really happy to talk to people about dialysis and home dialysis is really where my heart has always been. And I, I like keeping people home and talking to home patients. So here I am. And those of you in the Facebook group get to interact with Jen because she is very useful about jumping in and, and helping with the questions. So Keith, tell us about you. Yeah, so Keith Edwards, 
excited to be here. I am a registered nurse, started in Dallas in about 2000. Started off as a Dallas technician um, and been blessed awesome. to work in all different modalities. And so uh, the graduation to home therapy and learning everything that that consists of has been overwhelmingly a joy uh, because once you learn it, you wanna share it. And so uh, I'm just excited to be here, excited to be here with this panel. All right, and we will let you kick off the questioning. Yeah, let the, the interrogations begin. Ah, the interrogations. Uh, if for anyone that knows me, I am kind of a clown. So this is this is my attempt to be serious today. <laughs> no, I'm just playing. I'm just playing. We're going to be very informal, and I'm so excited because we do have Liz, Jennifer. We have Dora. We have a wealth of knowledge, uh, uh, and I think that knowledge empowers um, the patients and uh, and their care partners during this process. So yeah, it's definitely excited to be able to uh, to to do what we're doing today. Um, you know, Dave. David, I heard you say about the move. And so when I was thinking about questions, uh, I thought about that, you know, the move from where? Um, from and New in Jersey. that, okay, from New Jersey. Mm -hmm. And in that move, can you talk about some of the things that you had to do in preparation? Because this is not your first rodeo with the home hemodialysis experience. So mm -hmm. kind of walk us through some of the things you were thinking about, even when it came to moving into uh, the area that you're in now. Well, um, you know, I, 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 the first thing that was the biggest thing was finding a new nephrologist group. I've been with my mm -hmm. nephrologist group for 15 years. So it was like leaving, not just home, but leaving a group of people that have cared for me, you know, for over 15 years, who I was very close with, who I shared text messages with and would call on a normal basis and see on a normal basis. So that was the number one thing. Um, two was getting home ready. You know, I got to work with you know, the great team um, outside kind of looked out for me and had people in my home before it, I was in my home setting up the machine and, and doing everything for me. I was letting, letting them in from the electronic lock in New Jersey and they would come in and yeah. they'd get everything ready for me. So it, it was mostly about just getting the right nephrologist who, um, you know, I've met with the, with the, the dialysis center I'm with now um, and also just being comfortable with getting into a new environment. But sure. luckily, being home, I did have to treat in center for a couple of weeks when I first moved here just to get everything set up, you know, water cultures and all that stuff. But knowing that I was able to be home that quick um, was definitely beneficial for me. And it kind of allowed me to put a schedule together for the kids and everything like that. and wasn't worried about where we we're going to start because I kind of had in mind that where I wanted to begin and, um, you know, and, and was able to get that done with the move. Wow. Thank you for that. You know, and Jennifer, you and I have been there, the home assessment, right? Uh, you're talking to uh, patients and you're trying to help them envision how this modality can actually be incorporated into their, ho their home. You know, today we're talking about, you know, tips in living their lives, right? Lives being at home. Uh, Jennifer, when it comes to that home assessment, what are kind of some of the things you used to see when you would go out and do these home uh, assessments? I like seeing people put thought into where they're going to dialyze. Um, people, I mean, obviously you're gonna spend, no matter what modality you choose, you're gonna spend a lot of time in that space. And in order to spend time in that space and, and, and not hate your life, you really need to have a, a space work for you in, in a sense where you can be comfortable and mm -hmm. also safe and clean and everything else that you need. Uh, I love the way David has his music studio and all of that, that stuff in that. I, I love that. That's a sign of someone who is just really coping well with, with everything. Yeah. And um, I like when people make it themselves because I, I think um, that kind of softens the blow. And, you know, it, when you're spending a lot of time in a small area, especially when you don't have, you know, you don't have the ability to get up and walk 10 feet, um, being able to to really enjoy that space is 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 a lot psychologically yeah no i definitely agree with you on that and you know uh in preparation for even what we're doing today we had the pleasure of seeing miss liz or as she wants to be referred to as liz right kind of show us you know some of the things that she has even right. preparation you know as far as things that she's done i think even the drawer that she thought i didn't notice but she had just nicely separated with her supplies in I, so when she showed us those images, her house didn't look, her home didn't look like a hospital. And that was one of the main things that I would do in a home assessment. Um, and, and, and again, 
that would be a tip. That would definitely be a tip allowing your care team and knowing that in that process of just evaluating you, those things will, will come in conversation. Uh, and, you know, when I'm at my best, I almost feel like HGTV where I come in and I'm like, yeah, let's move this and let's do that to kind of help, you know, uh, the families see how this can actually be incorporated into their lives. Um, so, you know, I have another question. Um, since I brought you up, Miss Liz, uh, I'm sorry, I'm from the South. You got to put the miss in it no matter what, right? But Liz, tell us about those supplies hey. and how many supplies you use. I'm, I'm curious, is it? Uh, or, or show I, us. Yeah. If yeah, you don't yeah. mind. I, like I that, yeah. loved For, seeing that yesterday. Yeah. It, it I blew wanted, my mind. And as, I mean, we did she, get a little dizzy, oh, but geez. it was worth it. <laughs> I do here. And as she does that, just know for the yeah, audience that let me flip you around here. Yeah, Liz, um, uh, uh, Liz and Dick used to do peritoneal dialysis, and so they had supplies that were related to that. And lots here she's of, now doing home hemodial. Of, yeah, lots of supplies. Lots. Right? <laughs> here we are. But I'm, I've lost you for a second. Okay. Did we I still touch? have you. Can you see me here? We can go ahead, Keith, and I'll come back. Oh yeah, no, that's yeah. fine because you know we also okay. got a chance. I, I I've been sure. on uh, WinsOnlyLifestyle.com if I'm saying it right, or uh, I follow David Rush on Facebook, and and uh, he actually had a nice little video that showed some of his supplies as well. Um, and I was so, well, very I, very yeah, impressed. Let me just read yeah, this. Yeah, yeah, that's oh, fine. Well, address, sir. This is the typical supply thing. My little stash over here of boxes. Okay. And I'll have, you know, maybe I get 24 box boxes a month or for 24 treatments. So I'll have four cases of these cassettes. I have six cases of each of the solutions. So 12 of those. I'll have a case of dialyzers. Here they are, another case. I have a, a great dresser of storage, which is I really wonderful. Like that dresser. Yeah. yeah. Me yeah. too. Real, real stealth. Very <laughs> modern. All my little stash of things, which is great. Beautiful. Nice. And, and you don't even have to look at it when those drawers no, are shut. No, we don't look at it. And over here, we have the great and wonder powerful tableau. <laughs> my husband's favorite chair. That looks comfy. And most of all, he has a couple of beautiful windows to look at. I've got yeah. one closed, but we have a, a great view where we're sort of out. So he has a lot to look at while Very he's dialing. Very peaceful. Okay, I like that. I like so, that. So, yeah, I'll get you over here too. So anyway, we have so a pleasant place. 20, 24 treatments. And you said four cases, which you mean four boxes, four boxes. Well, I mean, four treatments. each box has four gallons in it. Okay. I use two gallons at each treatment. Okay. So I will get a 12 pack, what they call a 12 pack. So I, right. and I will have, and I have, but you're not getting 40 boxes. You're getting, no, no yeah. I'm getting. I'm getting four cases of cassettes, so that's 20. And I'm getting 12, let's see, I'm getting six boxes of each of the solutions. So I have 12 boxes of each solution, 12 boxes of solutions, and four of the cassettes. Uh, it, it's not, it's very compact. Yeah. So, yeah. That that um, was that was what really surprised me. I didn't yeah. realize how compact it was. Uh, and we have done peritoneal, and my husband also has had a trans. And so we have are very well aware of all the supplies for each, and that is what is required. And for us, be, well, because he needs to be on hemo, the supplies for the hemo for the tableau which is the modality that we're using now are fewer than were required for peritoneal just because of the, the type of dialysis and the, as, as those who have been on peritoneal know, you have many different percentages of solutions. So you need to have a lot of different options on hand and even options for manual treatments. Right. If 
if there's a problem with the machine. If You're, there's a massive hurricane that hits your entire state. Yeah, you can, well, if there's a massive hurricane that hits we're up a creek here with uh, yeah you're in california <laughs> you're, you're, not, you're not hurricane range but but some of our folks are but, but um anyway so we have had all these different modalities the transplant and peritoneal and now hemo and as i mentioned yesterday when we talked i love the technology and dick and i have a good partnership and that he deals with his the disease or, or his end stage his diagnosis and I feel that in our relationship our partnership that I can handle the supply ordering and the we do our scheduling and such so. and and remind us how long you all have been partners uh, we've been married since we met in college and we've been married 56 years now and wow. together That's I love wonderful. it I love it I love it I don't know where the time has gone but um yeah, he should actually. So there you have it. And we're no, Liz, I appreciate that. Definitely for showing us that, uh, you know, um, David, I have a question for you. Actually, it's uh, it's an observation. Um, you don't like cardboard, do you? <laughs> so <laughs> because I know you might not have the ability to show that now, but I saw in your organizational method, it, it, it was removing all cardboard and, and, and creating a system that that kind of flowed for you know uh, for what for what you like, mm -hmm. and and you know Jennifer going back to what we talked about with the home assessments that was one of the things that I would see so often is that in trying to give that visualization of you know let's say it was someone like David who didn't like cardboard there may be a family member um, that may participate in even just that step so what I'm kind of talking about is the fact that uh, in the partner situation. We all know it's not just about the care partner and the dialysis. It could be something as simple as, uh, uh, David, let me ask you, does your son break your boxes down for you every now and then? Or? <laughs> I'm, I'm, as, as every husband out there, I'll speak for every husband, I am the car, I am the, bo the box breaker downer myself. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, you know, I, I do have to break That's down all the boxes. Oh, exactly. Yeah. It is part of the description when you get married, unfortunately. Um, yeah. So being that I'm the one that bring in all the boxes, I definitely have to break down my own boxes. Mm. Um, and, but I do task my son with helping me take out the recycling and, and the garbage. So he does have to take the boxes out with me. Um, but yes, with the cardboard thing, you know, moving into this home, I was blessed to have a little bit more space than I did coming from my other home. And um, we have a storage closet that I'm able to put my things into that nice. um, I was able to go I kind of went a little bit, I forgot the name of it. My wife told me the name that it's called that in the hospital that she said it looks like. I can't remember the name of what the supply closet was called, but I went and got one of those five tier metal things from uh, from Home Depot. Yep. And um, just kind of <laughs> took everything out of the boxes and put the dialyzers on the top, put all the saline, put all the, uh, you know, the acid and the bicarb lined up. Labels front, you know wow. what I mean? So you know what it is. Beautiful. <laughs> I actually picked up a cart, one of the little carts um, to kind of, you know, I call it, I go shopping. So I go and put everything on the cart that I need and wheel the cart only into my treatment room. So that way it's not a whole bunch of junk around when I'm trying to do treatment. I do have a puppy, a new puppy, which is roaming around here now as we talk. He made his way into the room. And um, he, he likes to get into things. So I have to make sure everything is close to me and, you know, when I'm doing treatment, but it's fun to have him around as well. So I've, I've kind of became in my older years of uh, age and doing dialysis, um, not being so, where's this, where's that? I want everything to be close to me. Sure. So that way, if I do need an extra saline, do need to change out anything, everything is close to me and I'm at hands uh, distance. But of course, if I'm not able to, I make a quick call and, you know, the wifey may come down or my son may come down or my daughter and, and help me out with uh, whatever I need, so. Organization, you know, organization is very important, Keith. Yeah. yeah. So balance. you you moved, did you move from New Jersey or to New Jersey? From New Jersey to, uh, to, to Georgia. To Georgia. So you yes. are in the hurricane zone either way because mm -hmm. you're on the East a Coast. Little, a little bit closer for the have South, you, but have you ever have, have you ever had a hurricane and disrupt your treatment or do you have a plan for if the power goes out, what you would do? Because that is an audience question. What yes, happens well, if I'm in a hurricane? Because I'm in well, that of area. course, what they teach you is to always have a bag ready. Um, 
ready to go at all times. Um, just, you know, even if you're not doing dialysis, you should have like a, bag a suitcase ready. bag. Yeah. Just a suitcase bag ready. Us will have supplies, you know, for as many days as we would need. If we have to travel something I could just throw in the truck really quick. Mm -hmm. Um, they teach you how to get black your blood unless, you know, the power goes out and I can't use the machine anymore to cycle back in my blood. There's a crank where you can manually get your blood back in, but if it's an emergency, it just teach us how to unhook and go. Right. Um, and also too, you know, just being in the area, just having supplies, food, all those things, you know, safety kit stuff ready to go as well, you know, by the door in a bag. Do you have that? Yeah. So we do with the cans and stuff like that, that we would eat, obviously being a, a patient, you know, my phosphorus and all those things are an issue. So I can't really just eat the beans out the, out the jar, like everyone else would be able to, but, um, you know, if, if dire need, of course I would have to. But um, at the end of the day, you know, try to have the right things for me to eat to kind of prolong whatever I need to get the safe place to be able to treat again. Okay. Great. Hey, Liz, question for you. Um, so one of the things when I would train patients and then they would come back for their monthly visit with the nephrologist and the rest of the care team, I'd always have a spouse that would come to me and would whisper little things to me. Uh, that, <laughs> To have me be kind of the, uh, the, 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 hey, Keith, can you tell him to stop using <laughs> all that paper? And I know we're talking a lot about supplies, but what I'm really talking about is as a care partner and incorporating this in your life, can you talk about some of the things that you do or some of the, your woo-saw moments when it gets to yeah. that level? <laughs> um, one thing we live about, uh, the particular clinic that we go to for our supplies is about 35 minutes away. There's one closer, but. Anyway, we, we started this one clinic and so they were there. So I make a conscious effort to be organized. My husband is not. So I just finally typed up a little list Ooh, and these okay, are okay. All Beautiful. that I lose, use each, might use. And That's so when I go, I list. got this, it was a pretty short list. When I was at the clinic yesterday, here's my little, I was over there. I scan this in uh, before I go, before an appointment. I circle what I want, but I also take the list with me. So when I pick the things up, Check I get to like, wait a minute, what happened? To, I don't want to drive that 35 minute trip back and then another 35 minute that round trip. And so I take my list, or I also have it on my phone in a copy, and I make sure that when I leave, I have everything that I, I thought it. I needed. And that's Jennifer, you're thinking like me. That's yeah. a lot. Uh, I, I love it. David, I hate it when the, it's so nice to have it all at one time. Right. Yeah, well, I felt I was doing it. I was sending in, I was typing it up each month, and I thought, wait, this, I'm going back and I'm cutting and pasting, I'm adding. I thought, wait, there's a better way to do this. That's the old teacher in me. The other thing <laughs> we have is uh, simple, and David talked about his setup in. We have everything in, because of the nature of our house, our kids have all moved to their, moved out, nobody's in this room anymore. And we have everything in one room. So when they deliver the supplies, they bring them all back here. And when mm -hmm. I pick things up at the clinic, like yesterday, when I went over there, I brought back two cases of dialyzers and one case of saline that I get from the clinic. So I have those all in this one room. And then I also have, David, I don't know how everybody keeps an eye on you, but I finally set up a baby monitor in here that I had from when my grandkids visited. Mm -hmm. And so if I leave the room, or I'm, our, we don't have a big house, but if I go back to my our room, I just take the monitor with me. And I have the other one trained on my husband in the chair and I can look, oh yeah, he's sleeping or any noise I can hear and easily. And so I keep an eye on him that way. So yeah, I love that. I love that. Yeah, it's it's a real simple thing, and I'm sure people do the same thing. But for us, like I say, I I don't ever go far. I maybe do something productive, like take the trash out or something, but <laughs> that doesn't take long. Anyway, those are some the keep the organization for the supplies is huge, and as D David knows, and when I set up our table each day for each time we do a treatment. I remember the nurses, the training nurse said, when you have your disconnect caps to put on, always bring an extra one over to the table. In yes, case because one, one is going to fall on the floor. Yes, it's your, it's your insurance against one falling on the floor. 
like, oh my gosh. And then what you can count on the one time you didn't bring three or four. So, I mean, they're very close, but it's Little just- Little things it's always get the floor. Yeah, I don't need to even open the, go over to the little storage area. So there are so many nuances that might, for our system, and we've been doing this for two and a half years now with the Tableau, with, that these work for us. Yeah. So you must, have been, you must have been one of the early ones to, to use the Tableau. We had our, the first one on the West Coast. Cool. So we were excited about doing Very that. Cool. Being a Pioneer. Part. Yeah. I love it. I love it. You know, right. and Jennifer, when we look at that, even when we, as nurses, we, I mean, we use these stories to actually train other patients and give them ideas, right? Or, or and just in conversation, that kind of helps them vision. Um, but, you know, we've talked about supplies, right? Dory, we, we get it. I think I get the fact that, that, that the supplies is less uh, and there is creative ways to kind of incorporate these supplies in the home, whether it's David and wanna, wanting to not use the, the, the cardboard uh, the Omni or, cell. They call it the Omni cell in the hospital. Okay. That's okay. Oh. Like. Oh, that's what it is. I like it. That's I like it. Called. I like it. But you I know, know, and I, I but for our viewers, I, I, I want them to understand that, you know, and, and Jennifer, you can testify this too as well, that that's part of the whole process, you know, taking you where you are and trying to help you get to where you need to be to be successful. And sometimes that's not an organized teacher or, 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 or artist. Um, extraordinary to be in that environment. Um, we take you there and we try to help you get to that next level. So I appreciate both of you at least giving us a kind of a, a, a vision of what you do just with your supplies in your own home. Um, but I do have a question, right? Uh, I want to talk about, Dory, if you'll allow me, I want to talk about the fact that, you know what, your husbands and wives, you have uh, of children, and even as I'm doing this right now, I'm really paranoid. Is somebody going to walk by? Can you talk about like the atmosphere during dialysis, during treatment? You know, is it an isolated? Uh, I mean, you allow people to come in and out of your room. Um, can the puppy come in? Yeah, the can the puppy come in? Can you have pets? Right, right. Can you speak on that, David? I'll start uh, with you. Okay. Um, our, yes. you know, I I live a very well. Yeah, he's actually sitting. He's actually sitting watching right there. That is. <laughs> I'm like, hurry up and get finished. Yeah, he's, 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 he's definitely what well, he watches. That he watches everything. Um, <laughs> definitely, um, I'm an open book, very open book. Have been for such a long time. I've let the internet world into my treatments. I've let, um, you know, I've done treatment on the road. Uh, I did a 42 city tour doing treatment when I was touring with Pitbull in 2009. I toured with uh, the machine and did 42 nights straight. And, um, you know, people who are with me on tour saw me do treatment. Um, I've done treatment at families' homes. You know, I drive out to Florida and, and treat it in front of my whole family during, um, when I was there, the whole family came. I have a very huge family. And, uh, you know, of course, they'll let me get my moment to put my needles in. Once my needles was in, everybody kind of came in and conjugated in the room I was in. And, you know, and and I've, I'm very open with it because I want them to see that, you know, this is what's keeping me alive and, and, and that I'm still able to live doing this um my environment here uh it's more as you can see it's like a it's a creative room it's a studio room that i have that i do my work in my mixing in and you know my, my music production in um and also i wasn't originally going to put it in this room when we moved in i was actually going to put it into the now storage room that we have because i was so used to doing dialysis in a small place that i mm. felt like that room was going to be big enough for me to do it because i wanted to be out the way as much as possible because as dialysis patients, you know, sometimes we feel like we're a burden to everyone. We're in the way. And, you know, we just want to be tucked away somewhere, especially if you're home. In the center, it's a little bit different. But when you're home, you're like, okay, I don't want to make my home all about dialysis. So if you could just put me in a corner somewhere where nobody can see me, you know, you can be, we would be perfectly fine with that. But at the same time, being that we were coming into a bigger space, my wife is like, hey, you know, we don't need a dining room. You know, we can easily eat. We have an open concept. You can eat. We sure. can put our bed in. You take that room and make that your room for your studio and your dialysis and you just put everything yep. in one room. And I was just like, all right, you know, I, I thought that was, you know, actually pretty cool of her to even think she every house we looked at, she thought about my my dialysis room and my studio room. So there's an opportunity to put everything in one room. 
So for me, that was big to be able to kind of stay out the way. You know what I mean? Like, right. And right. if you're Dallas patient, you know what that is. So um, the environment for me is just glass doors. And, uh, you know, if, if the kids, they walk by, they look in, they see me doing treatment, they look at me, I'm like, you know, come in, you know, the door's open. The dog obviously does whatever he wants. And, um, <laughs> you know, you can have pets and it, it, it's more about you just being clean in your area. Of course, you can't have them on your lap and all that stuff while you're doing sure. everything, but. Some people you, do. You, it, yeah, some people do. <laughs> but, you know, I wouldn't. My dog's too big. But at the same time, it's just about being clean in your area, making sure you wipe things down, clean as thorough as possible, and just taking care of yourself. Um, but, you I know, heard the, your envir wife the environment is key. Go ahead. No, I'm sorry. I didn't mean, but I heard How your wife good? in a podcast say, right, that mm -hmm. uh, your loving wife said that the only time that makes her, uh, I think she said something about when she hears an alarm go off, right? Right. And, right. and, 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 and did I catch that right? Yeah, uh, she did. Like, like she pretty much lets you do your own thing, but every now and then she might. Now, I know Liz says she has a monitor and she takes that with her, right? When she right. steps away. Am I right, Miss mm -hmm. Liz? Yep. Yeah, but mm -hmm. can you talk about it? Because I think the one thing that I used to hear a lot is what happens when an alarm goes off? We know these alarms are, are, our safety measures, right? right? But can you talk about it? Like when an alarm goes off, when your wife, does she come in and she, is she frantic? I know you're a veteran right now with this, but can you talk about right. that? Well, you know, when the alarms do go off, you know, it, it, especially on the um, on the outside, it, it, it lets you know that something's going on. You know, no matter how, you can go in and try and turn down the whole system if you want, but when those alarms go off, it's it's, it's a bam, 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 and it's like letting you know something's up. But sure. the fortunate, but the fortunate part about that going off is that there's a picture telling you what's mm. going on. Like, hey, there's a kink. Hey, the levels are too high. Hey, you know your your pressure didn't take, or hey, your pressure's too low, or you know it's it, it's something there. So that kind of gives a sense of stability when the wife does come down. She knows not to be frantic because her franticness will make me frantic, and I'm already <laughs> like so. You know, I'm usually cool. But, you know, if you, if, you know, her getting scared, I'm like, hey, calm down. Like, we're, we're okay. Um, so when she can come in literally and see what it is that's going on, I think that kind of puts her at ease. Like, oh, hey, you know, it's just a line kink or something like that. Um, it, sometimes, it sounds like you, you pretty much dialyze solo and she's there in the house, but it's not sounding like she's your care partner. Well, she she's a care. She's always going to be the care partner. You know what I mean? She cares. Well, I mean, she cares. She cares support, for me. Nice. But, uh, but, but yeah, is you know, she <laughs> dialysis doing dialysis? She's not there with, with me. No. Yeah. I, and 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 you know, only because um, I have been I have been doing this for a while. Number one right. and two and two. You know, she it can hurt your sometimes care partners. It, it, it's hard harder for them to because it's not just the patient doing dialysis. Everybody in the house is doing dialysis. My wife's right. doing dialysis. My son's doing dialysis. You know, maybe not physically, but mentally, emotionally, they're doing dialysis with me. So sometimes it could be too much for people, and sometimes the patient may just want them to be supportive from a distance because mm -hmm. it's kind of like our thing. You know what I mean? And yeah. we don't want to. Um, we don't want to be a burden again that word we don't want to be a burden to them to be sitting here with us worrying about us for four hours and hey i got it i'll call you if i need you you know what i mean and th those are the way a lot of patients usually deal with it and you know of course i would love her to sit here with me and drink coffee the whole time and you know watch a movie sometimes but she has things to do we have two kids so it's cool when i could just handle this and she can handle that and i know if i need her a phone call away or a hey babe away you know <laughs> she might come she I, might, she might I have come, a she term might not, you know what I have a term for this it's called the hey honey partnership <laughs> yeah, hey, like honey and it's partnership. really like hey honey <laughs> And what the rest of the time you're fine on your own. Yeah. Exactly. That's okay. exactly that's exactly what well, it and, is. But and yeah. and Liz, it sounds like your your model's very different because you really are helping with the treatment. Well, I am there are fact, any fact, number of different ways to do this. Yeah. Dick has a David, it sounds like you have um Dick has a perm calf. Mm -hmm. And so I have official, yeah. I have official. Yeah, official. So which is impressive that you do that. And your dick is 80, your dexter, you're on it. And I don't know. I, I he's this system is better for us. And I, you know, we're very careful about still got right. my little little I always put up my little ticket by the heparin. I make sure heparin times three and 
I layered the syringes out a certain way. So because I like that, it does awesome. become very routine, and you're re it's repetitive, and it, and you can all sit and wait. I did this yesterday. Wait, did I do the saline already, or did I not? So I separated. I've got the hookup stuff when I hook it up, and so and I don't even have the closing things the antibiotic the genomycin that we close off with is on a different table so those syringes are someplace else and dick i've known dick like i say since college and he was abs i mean absent-minded then and <laughs> <laughs> he was you knew what you were getting um, into <laughs> It was always 50 50. I'd leave a note, you know, and you're picking up the kids and you'd say, Oh, was I supposed to? You know, so anyway, oh um, that's the way we do it, but it, it, like I say, it's it's not for everyone. And I, this is this is working for us. And, and we're also, like David said, we've we're very familiar with all the different modalities. And here's where we are now with, I like it. And this, that David. Talked it's about, about patient preference, patient preference, yeah. Yeah, yep. and you, David, you talked about traveling. That is one side that this when sounds like when you were doing your traveling, you were either peritoneal or with next stage, which does travel, the hemo that does travel. This does not travel. So this is here. I always I, I say to Dick, you know, God, wouldn't it be great to get a second home and we could buy another tableau and we just take the USB key and, you know, <laughs> but. That's a lot. Coming soon, coming no. soon. Yeah. Definitely, I was, on the, I was on Next Stage and I traveled with the Next Stage. I was doing home, home hemo with Next Stage as well yeah. um, before I was transplanted. And then uh, after transplant, I, I, I went back into uh, home hemo for a little bit as well, but it was different circumstances. Uh, I had kids and I just, again, felt like I was taking over the house and kids stuff and my stuff and dialysis stuff. And it just was too much stuff. So I decided yeah. to opt out and go back in center for a while just to kind of relieve some pressure from the home. And um, then that's when 2020 hit and uh, we all know what happened in 2020. And I was, you know, came to by my nephrologist and was just begging me to, hey man, I think you should be in the home for safety and you know, whatever the case yeah. would be. And that's when I was introducing the tableau. And uh, speaking of which real quick, if I can introduce her real quick, I talk about her, she never does this. So this is a real treat. All right, and I love it. Mimi is here. She never drum roll, gets on drum camera. Roll. Just getting her on my podcast was crazy enough. <laughs> but please, it, she's going to give a quick cameo. I had to pay her a lot of money to do this. Screenshot. This my wife, Got Mimi. it. <laughs> hey, my wife, how you Mimi. doing? Hey. Hey. She's doing me from the start. Hey, she actually hey. found my hey. disease. Hey. And she <laughs> is wearing pink. Yeah. She's wearing she pink. Is. Yep. 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 So she's a representation of me, right, Dory? So I pass credit. She got the so memo. She, she actually found my disease. Um, it was because of her that they found out that my creatinine level was so high. She was working in health. She'd been in healthcare for about 16 years. Uh, she did my blood work and everything, just a physical, me coming to get cool points as a boyfriend before we got married. And that's when they found my creatinine levels and found that everything was off track, wow. high blood pressure. And uh, that's how I learned I had kidney disease. So it was kind of in the contract that I had to marry her after that. So that's what happened. <laughs> and then we're still, and they still together. Like, <laughs> still together. You heard me say that earlier? Hey, Dory, you know, Dory and Jennifer, I thought about something. And, and it really was off of what, what Liz said. Um, uh, home Dallas is uh, central. I remember years ago, uh, going to the great website and looking at it and looking at some of the resources that were on there. And then you flash forward to now and, you know, not to do a shameless plug with Outset, um, but it's remarkable what we're doing now. And Jennifer, I, you said you've been in home, you've been in Dallas for a while and you've been in home Dallas as well, right? We're like experts uh, on this panel. I foresee the landscape changing, right? So these challenges that um, when it comes to uh, traveling and things of that nature, uh, it's changing, it's changing at a rapid pace with the collaboration that you're seeing with um, all of these different entities. So, you know, Liz made me think about that because that would be something that um, Liz just traveled to Hawaii, right? We said that in the very beginning for those that didn't see, didn't see that. And Checking and David, out a, a machine in Hawaii would yeah, be pretty great, wouldn't it? Yeah, yeah. And, you know, and then David traveled a lot. And then, yeah. Yeah. you know, Jennifer, we've had patients that, even if the machine could go anywhere at any time, any place, right, comes that challenge of just 
having to change your routine, right? And your and setup so, and all of your supply storage. Oh yeah, or even the mentality. Yeah. Dave and I were talking off record about this. I was talking about my mom. Shout out to my mom. She might be listening. And it's just like, you know what? Breaking that normal. And so the the mental part of it. So is there any tips that any of you can give? And David, I'll start with you um, in regards to some of the mental challenges. You're now at home and maybe you weren't always at home. You've been in in in-center. What are some of the challenges or some of the things from a mental standpoint that you have to put in place so that you can now explore whatever that option is that the device is now allowing you to have? Uh, good question. And number one is that you have to have the will to do it. You have to want, you right. have to have the will and the want uh, to do it. It's not a walk in the park. It's not an easy thing. There will be bad days, just like for everything else in life. Um, and the will, the and then there's the why. You have to have the why to do it. Um, the, the reason that you want to do this, you know, and a lot of patients always tell People, when you ask a patient, you know, what they did before dialysis, they, they'll they light up and they'll start to name all these things off that they maybe don't have a chance to do again. Um, and if, you know, you ask them if they would want to do it again, they would, they would take any percentage of it to do it again. So that any, no matter how big or how small you find the why in a person of why, right. maybe it's just to go to their grand, their grandkids graduation, to make the Saturday football games, um, to see, you know, to go visit family they haven't seen you know it it doesn't matter how big or how small the why is they have to have it um and those are the three things that are really most important of course location environment all those things matter but the will to do it has to start that conversation off to even want to do it um and those are the things that are important those are the things where the techs the nurses the doctors all come into play to find those candidates and find those whys and those will people to, you know, even talk to them about these different modalities and education, you know, educate yourself on your modality, educate yourself, educate yourself on the things you want to do and and the medications and all that stuff. Know what you're taking, know what's in your body, know what you're eating. All yeah. those things are very important when it comes to going home and and doing things on your own. So I think those are, those are the tips that I would give people to do if they are thinking about switching modalities. And as far as the travel, um, I'll be in Hawaii on the 17th ah, he's bragging. <laughs> and so you know i'll be treating out there long way um, from georgia <laughs> all the way from georgia all the way to hawaii treating on a tablet machine out there when i get there just popping my patient key in and treating out there so um you know there are means and ways to do it it's just a matter of setting it up early enough and and, and getting it done so uh, i would give those tips up keith if that answers uh, great tips liz tell me i i, I mr dick did yeah. he does he play hand? Does he play? Uh, what's his handicap? Does he? Does he golf for real? I, I've I've seen these videos of y'all walking yeah, around I, golfing and everything. I'm like, hold on, is that marketing? Is he really golfing? I said, you know, you should post those scores more often, Dick. To get a couple. <laughs> anyway, but Dick likes Dick does like to play golf, and um, he enjoys that. So I would say he gets out and plays with a little encouragement for me. Let's get out there and play. We live close yeah, to like where it. We belong to so. Often, I mean, we'll sign up for golf and we'll say, okay, we've got a two o'clock time. So let's get started with dialysis about 8.30. So you can finish, disconnect, have a quick lunch, and then let's go play golf. So that's, and we do factor that in. And so our schedule is Monday, Wednesday, Friday, generally for treatments, because I have a standing golf game on Tuesday and Thursday. So that's all about me. Good. And um, I put myself, I decided I need to put myself in the equation. And uh-huh. yeah, we start our dialysis on Wednesdays at 9.30 usually because I am have a, cl- a class I take at the gym from 8 to 9. But I have things set up and we come home and boom, do it right away. So we, we're starting by 9.15. And so we have something that works for us. But unlike David, I don't, I mean, I have grandchildren that live close by, but I know, you know, if I'm going to something at one of their schools or a a water polo game or something, we're not going to do, we'll switch the dialysis time. This is something we can do because it's our schedule. Right. uh, We're not fitting into a a busy in-center, but at the same time, we need those in-centers for uh, travel or for... Back up. Change, yeah. Uh, respite, yeah. Like respite, it. anything. Yep. So, yeah. 
some way this it, it, it fits and this definitely fits for us i i just i i i just think it's such a better mental thing for dick mm -hmm. to just kind of wander back here and we just say let's get started i, I just yep. think that i can't imagine being in his position so that's what i think about so i think this works for him he sits like here he's whirls and the hummingbirds and he's got these windows got this down so awesome. like that he said it, 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 here's it, it's the theme our 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 CEO about said Leslie Trigg often speaks about the quality of life and how important it is um, yeah. for the quality of life. And, and so it, it definitely sounds like that is, is something that, um, that we all work on. We, we, you know, we all work on on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, Jennifer, uh, I, I do want to pose like a nurse to nurse question, right? I know. You know, these, these, you know what I'm saying? Like nurse to nurse, you know? So, so I bet someone's probably sitting on Facebook right now and they're probably saying, well, yeah, you know, golfing, uh, these things. Like you and I both know that the, 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 the patients that we've been blessed to be able to, to, to go on this journey with them um, range from all shapes, sizes, colors, you know, the whole thing, right? Can tell me about, and I don't like to use this word, but tell me about that patient that you've had that wanted to do home and it was maybe the worst situation. I just made that up. Was it a worse situation, but they made it a, what was the worst situation in, in, in your role in helping to make it a, a great situation? So I have, I have, uh, I have once found somebody in, in a lobby, um, just with that, you know, that shoulders forward, real depressed, mm. you could feel the weight of the universe and you could see it on this person in a corner, having an anxiety attack was showing up for in-center treatments once a week because they were agoraphobic and it was legitimately difficult to leave their home. They didn't want to die. They just were terrified to leave the house. So I recognize this person had a lot of glitter and was obviously a very flamboyant personality. So um, I took a chance. I started calling them on the phone, at, like on their off days, like on Tuesdays. <laughs> and I, I would say, listen, listen, I think I have a solution that might work for you. I might have a solution that might work for you. And uh, eventually I got them to come in with their family on an off day and sit down in a completely calm, you know, no one was, there was no cannulation. We were not doing anything. We were just talking. And we flipped it and it really unfortunately this person who i grew to love um passed away from covid and it was way too soon they were way too young and it was awful uh but they were home for two years right but by the time that happened and had uh it was like the best home designer but it was a really good uh you know nobody pegged this patient for home Prior. people had pegged this patient to be in center or and to do poorly and it was really just it was just they, they just needed to have a better place to be they didn't no, want to be I, there I, I love that you know and as you're saying that because there's so many stories uh we always talk about home but what if you're home less and so that's what's coming to my mind right now a young lady who was home less but you know I think I heard Liz say it earlier, it's not for everyone, but I've always felt like everyone should know about it because as our situation changed, um, that right. seed was planted into her. That seed might be planted into someone right now as it's being archived or if they're watching this live. But as the situation changed, uh, then came the revisit. Uh, a relationship was built. Matter of fact, um, that actually led to a modality that even more empowered the patient that end up leading, uh, uh, leading to transplant, right? Oh. And, and after the transplant, then came the want to advocate and let everyone know that they can do it. Uh, and, I, and I think that goes into the why of why we're even doing this on, what's today, a Tuesday? Uh, a Tuesday uh, is because uh, it, there's that common denominator. Um, so for those that are on Facebook or whatever um, you're, you're watching this on, just know that, you know, um, this is something that, professionals are here to help you with that and we can help you get through it um but you know what 
Dory, I know you're better at this than I am, right? You tell me what's going on in your mind right now as we're getting ready to close. We 7.53 according to my clock. Dory, I want you to talk about some of the things that you're thinking about. You know, the thing that I really appreciated David saying, because I believe it so hard, is that the most important things about whether somebody's going to succeed at home are, are why they want to do it and how much they want to do it. And I think that those two things are very tied together. You want to do it because of the why. And that's something that is just forgotten way too much in healthcare, that this isn't just a decision about which way to clean your blood you know, well, we can get your blood clean this way or this way. We can put in a tube or you can have needles or whatever. And either way, we take out the water and the waste, just pick one. And and oftentimes people are approached, you know, as if like, well, you should do PD or you should do home hemo or you should do whatever. And it's not about the treatment option. It's about the life. It's about getting the life you want. And the treatment option is just a vehicle to get you there. And I can tell Liz and David from the things that you've been saying that this option right now is working for you and that you both have experience that at other times, other options work for you. And that's totally normal, Mm -hmm. you know, expecting that somebody's going to pick one treatment and that it's going to work, you know, for the rest of their lives, you know, maybe it will. Sometimes it does, but it it, it may not, and that's okay too. And I tell you, you know, I just tell people, there's no cookie cutter patient. Everybody yeah. is different. Right. Everybody is way different. There's some people who right. live and die by transplant. There's some people who never want to be transplanted. There's some people yep. who live on dialysis, who love in center because of the community, who love home because of their being home, who love peritoneal because they can sleep through the night. Like it's. You gotta, you know, just know the patient and understand what works for them. Um, nothing will never be the same. I can go and talk to a room of a million people and tell them how good home hemodialysis for me, but maybe only five people will get it, and 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 the other people would want to do something else, and that's totally okay. Like it's okay because we're all in the same situation, and just like people who, you know, I think the word that a lot of patients use is want to be normal again. Right. We just want to live a normal life, and our normal is just so much different than everyone else. It's hard for people to realize when I say, hey man, I'll be there. I just got to knock out a four hour treatment today. And they're like, what? Like, you're still coming? Right. <laughs> yeah, I'll be there, but let me just knock out my treatment. It's part of my day. It's part of my normal. And uh, I think once people start to realize that, um, you know, people start to understand how a patient thinks, um, then they'll start to understand how to go at them about not worrying about how your blood is being clean, like you said, being much more than a flow sheet. And really just, um, you know, going beyond, you know, since you're not behind, you don't have a chance to get behind the needle like we do. But if you understand that the person is a person first, um, then you can start to evaluate them from a different place. And Zoli, you know, our and chief Zoli. medical officer, uh, Routes at Medical, Dr. Uh, Aragon, um, has done a lot of, uh, has had a lot of conversations about the PD to HHD or the PD to home hemodialysis. Um, and, and I know when uh, Liz, yeah, the flip, you know, and, and one of the things I would like to say as a nurse that I've, I've definitely tried to sharpen myself on is just, you know, sometimes we can get so excited about one modality that we almost will speak negatively unintentionally about the other modality, you know, and so um, I know one thing for certain, there's never been a patient that I haven't been blessed to train or go through this journey with that if they had to have a modality change, and let's say that is in center, right? Um, they option. are the smartest. Yeah, that option. They are the smartest patients about their in center treatment. How could they not be, right? And so their quality of care changes, if I can say that, just in the fact that they are more cognitive about the things that are going on in their care. So uh, that's what I hear with all of this is I hear that we're talking today about home hemodialysis and we've talked about some tips and given some viewpoints. Um, and in that comes the education that empowers our patients to, or excuse me, for everyone that goes through this process. Uh, and, and that's remarkable. Um, I, I do want to say one thing. I'm talking a lot. Y'all shut me up. Years ago, I went to Home Dialysis Central, right? And I saw the uh, Dorothy. Is it the shoes? 
right? And it was a no place. And I, I remember taking a patient and I said, hey, cause I was like anxious to try to see if I could show them, hey, you need, here's all the options. And I didn't even realize that when they saw that, they, no place like home, the word home and how it's defined is different with every patient. In that movie, it was what, a house? What, did it have a picket fence around the house? Right? So. Yeah. yeah, but I was in Alabama and, and, and that, that particular gentleman lived in a trailer, right? And he did very well in his beautiful trailer and everything in his environment, where he lived is how he lived. And so that's the one thing that I want to get across. It's the word home means different from with everybody that's involved in it. And, that's a great uh, and point. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, but but it is 7.59. It is. Right? That yeah. hour just uh, blew. It, it, I knew it was going to go quick. I didn't get a chance to see if there was anything in the chat. But uh, I, I answered some of the I, I, awesome. yeah, I posed the one question that made sense to ask you guys to you guys. And then there was a little oh, side perfect. chatting going on. Do we do we have an opportunity to I mean, these conversations are always really great. But um, do we have an opportunity? David, can how can we how can someone hear more about your story if they wanted to? Um, if you want to, you can definitely follow me online. Um, I'll quick plug myself. You can follow me on Instagram, <laughs> my journey. At Type David that Russell into the online. chat. Yes, I will. At David Rush Online on the Instagram. Also, if you want to hear um, my, if you want to, I'm going blank. If you want to hear my podcast, you can go on to Apple Podcasts and listen to What the Health is Going On with David Great Rush. Podcast. Great um, podcast. Great podcast. What, what, what the Health? What the so, Health? What the Health is Going like On that. with David awesome. Rush. Uh, you can look that up. I'm working on season two right now. Season one is out. And also Rules to Win By also is um, another semi-podcast that's on Apple Music as well. And there's a bunch of music on there. So if you like music, country albums, reggae, hip hop, whatever it is, you can go listen to everything on Apple Music, Spotify, and just type in David Rush and you'll find me. But David Rush Online on Instagram, plus. follow my journey. And just winsonlylifestyle.com is my, if you want to get Wins Only merch and stuff like that. And uh, just everybody out there, if you're living with chronic kidney disease, if you're living with anything, if you're just living, period, just continue to live, continue to win, smile, only. treat every day like it's a pot of gold, because it really is. Yeah. And um, much love to everybody. And I'm very grateful for the opportunity. Thank you so much, guys, for having me. Thank you. And, and Liz, any any parting I, wisdom that you want to share? I so wish that Dick was here, but listen to David. I, I wish think. he was too. Me too. We'll get on the phone together. We will we will talk together. We yeah, set it yeah. up, Liz. We'll get on the phone. Yeah, Liz, Liz what, what golf course? Yeah, anytime, just call me, bring your tablet. All right. But, um, but his attitude. And uh, Dick Henry, my husband, might be the most oblivious, but is the most positive person I know. In the mm. worst scenario, he can only see the glass is half full. Aww. So this is a guy who struggled with kidney disease. He found out about it when he was, I think when he was early, late 20s. And so he has been through all these stages. The, and each one, he said, okay, well, they say I'll be able to get so many years out of this trans before I need to have a transplant. I'm going to make it longer. I'm, going to, I'm not going to need a transplant to longer. And I'm going to, once he had the transplant, I'm going to hang on to this. And he did for a long time. So everything he does, is that the key word for him, I would say, he has an amazing attitude. It helps that somebody's behind him picking up all these pieces here. So he, <laughs> that's okay. That works. And so, yeah, I just think attitude is huge. So that would be what I would I be. think you are absolutely this guy right. that is, is going to have his 81st birthday. He, that's he, amazing. There's no awesome. reason he could still be here. But this is the yin to the yang, man. The yin and the yang over there. I love it. Yep. He's, he's got well, everybody, Hi. hold up, hold up your coffee mugs. How about that? Hold up your coffee mugs. Well, I here. have my water bottle. Your, your, your fake coffee <laughs> mug. This has been, be yeah, this has been awesome. <laughs> um, uh, you, thanks to uh, in, my, in the Eye, Home Dallas Central, Outset Medical, uh, and it's been a pleasure. I definitely have learned and I'm, I've been blessed to be able to share uh, my story. And uh, I think we're we're out of time.